<laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so we're recording. So I'm Morgan and I'm Brittany. And we're going to talk to you about success partners, which is really big because Nikki's really been talking about them lately. So um, we kind of thought this would work perfect for our team. So I became a coach in April of 2013. I signed up with Nikki, who I went to college with after months of you should be a coach and me ignoring every inbox from her. I did a program on my own before becoming a coach and I had some success. So then I bought Chalene Extreme, then Insanity, then T25, and I became addicted to vegan Shakeology and it just kind of exploded from there. I hit Emerald in my first two weeks of being a coach and then Diamond on day 156, I believe. Um, and at the time, that was the fastest anyone on our team had hit it. So that was kind of exciting. And now all you new babies are blowing me out of the water. So that title's long gone. <laughs> um, but now I'm one star qualified, technically. So that's exciting. Um, yeah. So then, Brittany, do you want to share a little bit about your story so you can finish? Sure. Um, so I became a coach day one of my challenge group. So that was back in August. Um, I was listening to the August surge. If any of you have heard about the surges, it's when Carl Deichler and some of his team basically gets on the computer and streams video and audio that anyone can listen into. And basically, we put in questions and he answers our fields questions and you hear from the best leaders of the company all day long. So I listened to that the first day of my challenge group and was, and I said to myself, this company is amazing. So I signed up that day unbeknownst to my coach Cody. Um, and ever since then I um, just became more and more addicted to the lifestyle that everyone leads with Beachbody. It wasn't so much the workouts and the programs like Morgan, cause I really didn't have a transformation at that point. I didn't have any story, um, really. So it was more of just the culture of the company and the people I was surrounding with. Um, insert Morgan Puckrin there. Um, so the team was really helpful, the team page, and I just love the energy of everyone around me. Um, and I really didn't have any goals per se for the business because I have a full-time job and I'm happy where I am um, and make a good uh, income. So I really don't didn't do it for the income. I really did it for the camaraderie. Um, but as many of you guys will know and you'll hear from us, your goals will change um, probably every two weeks, it seems. Um, so ever since then, my goals are a little bit different and I am looking to make this a full-time um, job in the next year. I'm like Morgan, I'm one star qualifying. Ironic since we're success partners, mm -hmm. I think not. Um, so, you know, we're at, the, we're at the same rank, we're still qualifying. Um, with big goals for the rest of the year, which kind of leads us into the rest of the call here. Um, Morgan, do you want to take it for the next bullet point? Sure. So I wanted to really talk about this because it kind of set me in motion to find Brittany. So when I first became a coach, I had met a girl named Chelsea Smoker. She used to be a coach on our team. She was also, weirdly enough, sponsored by Cody. I just must love Cody's coaches. And we just instantly clicked. We had that like blonde, same personality, and it just worked. And a couple months into the business, Chelsea decided she needed to take a step back, which led to her quitting coaching completely, which for me was devastating because I had all of this support that we kind of built on our own. I kind of messaged Nikki one day and was like, Hey, Chelsea's my success partner. We're just going to see how it goes. And it was going really well. And we set all these goals together to hit them. And she left and all of my goals dropped through, which I think is really important because that's a big part of being success partners with someone is you depend on each other to keep you focused on your goals. And when that person disappeared, it was, I mean, you lose a friend kind of, you know, somebody that you talk to every single day. So it does happen, but it also shows that like finding the right person for you might not happen the first time and that's okay because it's just going to lead you to more awesome success club partners like Bee Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, keep going. Okay. 
So Brittany and I met when she joined her T25 challenge group, which I thought she was a coach the whole time, which apparently she was, but it wasn't really like active yeah. coaching. So when she signed up on our page, we talked about this last night. I commented, I thought you were already a coach because she was super active. She was always commenting on everything, which I mean, automatically attracts to you. I'm sure you can all think of one person in your mind right now who's in your challenge groups and you're like, oh, I can totally relate to that person. That happened to be Brittany. Then we discovered that we both love wine, <laughs> which led to selfies of us with our wine glasses tagging each other literally how we became friends <laughs> is we <laughs> we had a drinking problem and <laughs> we didn't one day we actually said we don't want to feel like we're drinking alone because we were sitting in our living rooms by ourselves drinking which means you have a problem so <laughs> if you're doing it long distance with a friend you're fine so that's kind of how it started and we just sort of built this friendship that turned into way more than I think I anticipated and I'm sure Brittany the same like I didn't I didn't expect what came after that to come after that at all and the and the point to that is Beachbody is more than just challenge groups and coaching people and signing people um, it goes beyond your challengers. I think to make a really successful coach and something that has helped me succeed, guaranteed since day one, is being a highly active participant in team pages. Mm -hmm. Very highly active. I have read every single post on that page, I can almost guarantee you, since August. I don't let things slide by. I know the answer to everything, um, pretty much. And if I don't know it, I will go find it out. Um, and I think that's where I became to know Morgan because I congratulated on her on becoming diamond. Not that I knew who she was, but just because that's awesome. So the more relationships you build within this team, the more you comment. I mean, if you comment on one of my posts, I had some people from other teams, some coaches comment on my posts and I went on their wall and like commented on theirs. They offer no benefit to me. You know, I'm not going to make money or income or rank from them, but the more you get to know coaches on our team, on other teams, the more successful you're going to be hands down. So I created a bond with Morgan just by commenting on her things and being highly active. So that's one piece of advice I could give to anyone starting out, or even if you've been on the team for a long time, become more involved in the team and build this beyond just your business. You know, if someone has a question, answer it for them, you know, give up the information that you have. So that was something that Morgan and I had created from the beginning was camaraderie, both in the team page, which then led to outside of the team page. And once you have a bond with a person on a personal level and not just a business level, uh, your success can skyrocket from that. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, that challenge group is actually where um, Nikki came up with the idea for our coaches to make sure that we comment on everyone's posts because I didn't know Brittany and we're, we don't have the same sponsor. So typically in the past, I probably wouldn't, I would maybe like her post in a challenge group, but I wouldn't really say anything probably because I didn't, you know, like I don't know her and I never want to come off as creepy, but what it turns into is you're commenting and then you find out that, you know, Susie is engaged and she's getting married in August too, but you would never know that because you're not on the same team. So it really broadens you know how you can get to know each other even um Brittany and I just had this happen with two of our coaches the girl who's not personally sponsored by me but is on my team and Brittany's brand new personally sponsored coach they bonded in a challenge group and they're still friends on Facebook and they talk every single day much like we do but they never would have met had they not joined in that challenge group and met together and now they're coaching together and you know who knows what can can come from that maybe they can be the next Morgan and Brittany <laughs> wishful thinking <laughs> uh, so that's just that's just my one piece of advice from that bullet point that we have is yeah, come nice. active with other coaches um comment uh not so much like their posts because lots of posts get likes yeah. comment take the three seconds to say that's great congratulations whatever it is or 
Hey, you I'm sorry about um, the same thing. If yeah. you're curious about something, post following underneath of it just so your name comes up so people start seeing you. You know, start building relationships with the team because I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Um, when I say my team, team resurrection and everyone on it, hands down. So your success is going to be directly linked to your personal team that you build, but also those coaches around you. Never forget that. Um, so let's move on to the next point because we can go on forever. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, do you want to read them or you want sure. me to read them? And you so, uh, one thing that we started once we kind of created this bond was we noticed um, we needed more some accountability. I think it started more as accountability and brainstorming. I noticed Morgan was posting a lot of ideas on the team page and I kind of shared those ideas or was curious. So we messaged each other and said, hey, why don't we do one time a week, we do weekly calls with each other. So we got on the phone. I think our first one probably lasted at 45 minutes to an hour. Now they could probably go on for two, three hours if we let them. Um, but we <laughs> scheduled those meetings and we kept to them. Like they were part of our job. Like you wouldn't skip a meeting in corporate America if it were on your calendar. Morgan and I did not skip meetings. Did we have to push them back a half an hour, make them work for us? Absolutely. But we didn't miss them. And, you know, our family and her fiance understood that those were critical to our business. You treat, um, you know, your business like a million dollar business because it has the potential to be that. You treat this meeting the same way. This meeting has the potential to make you 15, you know, superstar diamond coach. It does. Um, from what we get out of it, um, there's a lot of benefits. So we treated it as critical to our business and still do. Um, Sometimes we don't have calls as much anymore because we're super busy these days, but we talk daily. So I think the half an hour to an hour we talk every day, you know, we probably talk seven hours a week at least. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah. And it sounds, that sounds a lot, but pretty much Morgan's my go-to. So, you know, I don't spend all day talking to just Morgan. It's all throughout the day and bouncing off ideas and things like that. Um, so Go, you can go into the next one, Morgan. Yeah. And, um, the other thing too is, um, Brittany lives in Boston, which most of you probably know. And so when she comes to town, it becomes how, what days can we meet? What time works for both of our schedules because she's visiting family. So you have to work around that. But over Christmas is the first time we actually met in person and we saw each other every day. And that's no joke. We became success partners in October. So we had three months where we never even met face to face, but when she was here, we met for an hour every day in Panera and Bethel and brainstormed. Sometimes we didn't even speak, but we were typing things and contacting people and holding each other accountable. And it was just that the fact of being with each other that we knew it was business. And we made that from the beginning. Like, yeah, we have our friendship and yeah, our, stuff gets ridiculous now but in the beginning it was not like that we were you know and I was a diamond coach and Brittany was a brand new unranked coach when we, became, yeah. when we became success partners so that doesn't mean anything and now you know we'll get to that and then you know. but um a big part for us was that we chose each other um and not saying that like having someone assign you a, a success partner doesn't work, especially because your upline knows. But we knew from the beginning that we weren't going to benefit from each other. I'm not in the same business center as um, Brittany's upline, and I'm not on the same leg. So we literally get nothing from each other. Brittany, rank advancing just makes me feel happy. Like we just genuinely want each other to do well because we stand to gain nothing from it. No matter if she's a superstar diamond, I mean, go Nikki. That's awesome. <laughs> but like for me, it's just like seeing my best friend be the best that she can be. And that's super important. And what we said last night was, it's not that I don't want you to do to not do better than me. But I feel like if you're hitting one star diamond, I better be one star diamond, which we hit within seven days of each other. She hit one star qualifying and I hit the very next Thursday. Like there's no, oh, I'll get it when I get it. But I'm super proud of you. It's like, no, that keyword got one star and I want it too. Like she can't, you know, we got to be together. We have to, 
work together. So it really, it kind of brings out the competitive edge in you, but in a friendly manner. You know, I would, I never want her to fail because I want her to succeed because she's my partner and I care about her. But at the same time, like I better be holding up my end of the bargain. Like you can't carry me as your success partner. So I think that's really important is um, just knowing that even if you stand nothing to gain, that you are supporting each other 100% in everything and giving each other complete honesty, even when you don't want to. Oh, yeah, that's huge. <laughs> um, your upline will sometimes maybe not know your ins and outs or be too um, slow to judge or criticize you for, you know, fear of, uh, I wouldn't say hurting your feelings or hurting your business. Um, but Morgan and I don't have that. We have the no filter policy, you know, and if I'm slacking in something, she's the first to call me out. Tell me I need an attitude adjustment. I mean, we'll have our five minutes of like vent session, but tell me I need an attitude adjustment. You know, they're there to keep you pretty much in line because even though my success means nothing to Morgan financially and business wise, my success means a lot to her because it will eventually equal her success because our successes are balancing. So if I start going backwards in rank, if I start going to diamond and losing things, that's going to pull Morgan down. So why would she want that? You know, so you have to keep up the playing field. Um, and there's that honesty with telling each other what you're doing best. I can ask Morgan, like, hey, where do you think I'm slacking my business? Which I've asked them before, reached out, and I've asked Cody and Nikki and Morgan, what can I do better that would generate business? And, you know, you take it like it is, and they'll just call you out on it. Um, not to be mean, but it's only to help you. Um, all right, moving on. Next one, I think Morgan said this, but we chose each other. But also, this isn't to say this is a complete role, because I know – Stephanie and Natalie are success partners and they're best friends. Um, but we personally highly recommend not choosing a friend. So if you have a coach um, <laughs> underneath of you or a best friend on this team that you guys happen to sign with the same coach, highly recommend not becoming success partners because one, you already know each other and two, you have the ability to hurt each other's feelings and three, a competitive nature might already be bred into the friendship, whether you realize it or not. So um, personal opinion, when you are going to and if you're going to choose a success partner, steer clear friends. Not that it's a terrible idea, but personally for me, I think you'll get more out of someone having someone hold you accountable who you do not know. In the beginning, Morgan seemed like almost a boss to me in a way like I was slightly intimidated like I better like have my crap together if I'm going to talk to my friend on Sunday like agenda like written down so you want to have your t's crossed and your eyes dotted. if I were talking to my best friend like Morgan is now half the time we're you know gossiping about what happening this weekend so <laughs> I mean don't choose a friend that's kind of one of our thought just personal thoughts yeah um definitely. we already I mean, did go ahead I was just gonna say like you know, we talk about like hitting success club, you know, the past two months have been reversed and Brittany's like, I have, to. she's like, I don't even have success club. And I was like, so offer an incentive. <laughs> like, Duh. we take like the don't be an idiot, like tone <laughs> with each other. Like, you know, the answer, but sometimes you just need someone to tell you, like, you're being silly. Like you need to step it. away. You know, you can do this. It's, not do you have an ice cream truck behind you. I do. It's coming from the <laughs> apartment place. I was hoping you couldn't hear it. <laughs> I can hear. It. <laughs> um, but you know, you just but like she said, we have our five minute like I wanna punch babies, and mm. then we move on. Then we're done. Like you get upset about it and you move on. That's it. You know, don't don't dwell on it and don't use each other as that crutch either. Yeah. That's huge. You don't, you don't want to pull your relationship down or always be a Debbie downer, but let's face it. This business does not go like this. You know, it's not smooth sailing. It's not sign one challenger hit success club every month. It's like easy breezy, you know, no emotions come into play. Let's be honest. It's a roller coaster and sometimes it can be hourly daily. You know, you never know what's like right around the next corner. So it definitely helps to have someone who, you know, is willing to hear your vent sessions because, you know, sometimes we just don't have time for that. 
but Morgan's always there to listen to my one minute rants. And then we're like, all right, pick yourself back up. Let's hit success club 10 by tomorrow. You know, there's always like a goal attached to it. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, there's always some goal attached to it. So, um, and recap, I would just say that, and I can't express this enough. I would never be where I am today without Morgan. Um, I would never be where I am with a lot of the team, but if it weren't for Morgan being there 24 seven, I would probably lose my mind half the time. And I would probably, I wouldn't say given up, but I would never see the potential to quit my job by the time I turn 30, which is next October and take this full time and raise a family on it. Um, you know, she has that vision and she believes so deeply in it that I couldn't help, but my goals started to align with hers. Um, so I wouldn't say you have to pick someone who has the same goals as you per se, but I think you have to have someone who aligns with you in beliefs and values and, um, you know, personality wise, because my goal, like I said, in the beginning, wasn't to take this full time, wasn't to, you know, be a 15 star diamond at the very beginning. I just wanted to be around the people, but that quickly changed once I became, you know, success club partners or success partners with Morgan. And that was her belief. And, you know, eventually you start drinking the Kool-Aid and, you know, now we have very similar goals. Um, and we're already talking, you know, a year from now, like what it will be like and on the Cancun trip next year. So when you create that bond, there's no way I could ever leave Beachbody. Hands down, no way. I love, you know, the people in my life. There's, I could never just be like, oh, I'm done with this kind of thing. So if you create bonds with people beyond challengers and just making a buck and hitting a success club and selling a challenge pack, this will become so much more life changing for you that you will, you won't even know how your life was the same ever before it. So, and, and to all those coaches who are just starting or who second guess themselves, reach out to coaches, make bonds because these people will be there for you through thick and thin, you know, come push, come shove. And that means the world because there's not many people out there who are like that. So thank you to Morgan and Nikki and Crystal and Cody and Allison and a million people. I see your faces on this call that have, you know, gotten to me where I am today. And I hope I've been that same for you guys at some point in time. Definitely. I mean, think about it. Like, so we went on the cruise and a lot of people really thought it was funny that I took Brittany. She was like <laughs> my lover. <laughs> and then we realized that we are kind of dating and <laughs> my fiance to point it out. We talk to each other every day. Like we cry together. We <laughs> went on vacation together. I've only been on one vacation with the man who's going to be my husband. And I've been on the same amount of vacations. My first time out of the country with Brittany. <laughs> so it becomes, but that seriously changed everything for us. If you can't take your significant other on a beach body trip, um, Seriously, I highly recommend taking another coach. You can run it as an incentive on your team. You can take your success partner. I literally wouldn't have taken anybody else. Um, I'm like super emotional now. Thanks. Uh, because it was me, Cody, Brittany, Nikki together for a whole week. Um, yeah, we were having fun and we had the best time ever probably. Um, but then we sat down and we talked about our businesses and we just realized like this whole company, I can't even see the screen right now. This whole company just brings people together and it creates these friendships that you are never going to find anywhere else. Like you can spend your whole life and you have that one best friend that you've always been friends with and that will never change. But the people in this business know where you're coming from every day. They know what it feels like to have the best week ever to the next week you are like did I make any money <laughs> did I you know am I doing something wrong why aren't people following me and then you realize oh I didn't read my personal development I didn't contact five people a day I didn't drink my Shakeology every day this week I forgot to work out and they hold you accountable they know all of your flaws they love you anyway it doesn't matter like 
Brittany and I show each other our ugly and that's what we call it. And we love each other for our ugly and everyone in Beachbody will love you for your ugly because everyone has it. Everyone has their ugly. Everyone has terrible crap they've been through. Everyone has that, but you have to find that person that embraces it and helps you push past it. Even if they say like, look at the beautiful person you've become out of this. You know what I mean? It's just, it's so important and building the relationships in this business are what are going to help you succeed. You can't do it on your own. And I wouldn't recommend going after this day without a success club partner. Which, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Action item. Yeah. So <laughs> one thing that we want you to do is to write down three qualities that you would look for in somebody to be your success partner. Do you want them to call you on your BS, write that down. Like if that's something you know you need, do you need someone who's going to be more compassionate? You know, like Brittany is the, I'm going to tell you how it is. And I was like super fluffy unicorn. It's going to be fine. Let's go pick daisies. And in the end, Brittany's a little more mushy now. She does try. <laughs> she didn't before. And I'm like, I'm done with your bullshit. <laughs> but you need that. Like, we needed that for each other. She needed more mush. I needed more rock. <laughs> so if that's what you need, write that on your list. And just pick those three things. And take that to your upline. If Nikki's your sponsor, if I'm your sponsor, if Brittany's your sponsor, Cody, whoever, just say, hey, Nikki, I need somebody who wants to be diamond by July. I want them to push me. And it would really be great if they were married too. Like maybe you want somebody who understands what it's like to need to share that time commitment. And then Nikki, Nikki knows she's like beach by Jesus on our team. So just tell her and she'll be like, Oh, that's Karen. She's perfect for you. Hey, Karen, do you want to be your success partner? There you go. So like you're picking your person, but you're using Jesus to help you find it. <laughs> and like uh, Morgan said, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't work out, I think there's like a no offense policy here. You know, like definitely. sometimes it's always not the perfect combination. Your schedules don't align, which is huge. Like if you can't talk at the same time, if you can't chat, like, and you're doing it all via email, that's not really going to create a bond or something. So, you know, if your schedules don't align or someone, you know, you're putting in more or less time than the other person, but because you have to, you know, Sometimes I put in less time and Morgan's like, step up your game. That's different because I had the time I was just being straight up lazy. If you literally can't commit that time, but the other person's working, you know, is a stay-at-home mom work and doing this full time and you work two jobs already, then obviously that's probably not going to work. So don't be afraid to say to the person, you know, I don't think I'm getting the most benefit out of this. You know, I don't know how you feel, but maybe it would be best if we, you know, looked for other success partners or, you know, maybe we could just bounce ideas off each other. So don't feel like you're stuck in like a success partner is like the end all be all. And from here you're like bound to that person for life. You know, I've and had the other, other person probably feels it too. Exactly. Because it's not working. Did you want to say something, Nick? I saw the hand waving. <laughs> Brittany touched on it. I just wanted everyone to know, like if you are with somebody and you're putting more into the relationship than they are, then you need to be like, Hey, I need this from you, or I'm going to need to find someone else because my goals are important to me. Because as we go in this business, like Brittany said in the beginning, your goals change, you change. And when you are a brand new coach and you're put with someone and they're not moving at the same speed as you, that means that, you know, you have bigger goals then you need a different success partner. So at the same time, you know, you are being great with each other and you're becoming friends, but you need someone that's going to push you harder Then you need to step up and say that, you know, I need someone that's going to push me harder. I need someone that's going to set goals. If you don't feel comfortable telling the success partner, come to me, let me know and I will pair you up with someone else. But that's all I wanted to say, but you guys did great. You touched on everything that I wanted to touch on. So yeah. And that was, yeah. um, the last thing too that we wanted to talk about was um, you can have more than one success partner, which kind of goes into what we were talking about. Um, it actually is because Brittany and I were very 
vocal and out there with our success partnership and what we were doing with it and how it was changing our business. Um, I was approached by a coach on another team, still part of the dynasty, um, but her upline is Lindsay Stay. And so we literally are, you know, unconnected. And we learned that our income, literally down to the dollar, were the exact same from the time we both started coaching. Uh, we got the same elite points. We got the same success club points. And we were just kind of going back and forth. And we learned that our styles are very similar. So she and I are very similar. But she's also um, a busy mom. But she understood the side of I need a day with my fiance. Like I have to set aside a night for date night to be with him because that's very important to me. Um, and since we're going to be newlyweds, you know, that's very important. And she understood that side. And that's brought a whole other dynamic. But I can also bring our conversations into my meetings with Brittany. So now I can say, hey, Tara and I were talking about running this group. What do you think about it? Would you be interested in it? And then we can kind of, even though we're not all talking together, we're working together. So if you find two people that you are comfortable with and you know you can give the time to them, then don't be afraid to say like, I really want to work with this person too, you know, or like um, today I just got my third success club partner, Brittany Ortiz. She's not on here. Well, she might be if she's still at Chuck E. Cheese, but so now I have three. <laughs> I'm like rock, rock star, super success partner, Morgan. I need like a superhero shirt, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like don't be afraid to take that commitment. But if it, if it gets to be too much, don't be afraid to say, like, I can't commit to this right now. It's just not working with my my life, my, what's happening. So, All right. We don't want to get cut off. Does anyone yeah. have any last minute questions? I think this will probably end in like three or four minutes. Yeah, we have like six minutes left. No, yeah, six. Does anyone have any questions? You can unmute yourself. Oh, I see the timer. Mm, no? Are you wondering what I'm eating? It's yes. the ultimate reset Asian stir fry vegetables. And they're amazing. Did you, Did you have a question, Allison? Oh, no, now you're muted again. Okay. Well, you're unmuted, so I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> okay. Well, if no one has any questions, I'll stop recording this and then um, I'll post it. So if any of your coaches that you sponsor or anyone you think um, is curious about Success Club Partners, uh, let me know. And if you have any questions for us, you can message us Brittany's bedtimes in 30 minutes. So <laughs> you better hop to it, but I'll probably be up till like 2 a.m. So you can message me anytime. Um, the late and we'll, we'll post the bullet points too. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. We'll post those so that you get the quick recap in case you don't have time for 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for getting on everyone. We appreciate it. Okay. Ciao um, beautifuls. Bye.